<laughs> or for the pastor. He's going to be doing the invocation. Um, Molly do. Did she ask you? Okay. <laughs> Jeremy Harper. You, do you normally call him up to do? Or? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So he's coming. Okay. Yeah, I ended up sending it last week, but I forgot she was out. Are you going to the, um, so I'll be glad tomorrow. Hello, welcome back. <laughs> you can at least play it out, so. Well, it's 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 twenty 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 fifth. Ticket at the door, they don't sell out. <laughs> How have you been? Uh, it's been a rough, uh, rough few no, mine's just, I wanted to see if yours was acting up.
been we've been keeping busy with the Lions. That's cool. That's good. I'd like to get back to the top. That's one of the busiest groups I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. I I have to do about one thing a month, maybe. Sometimes they'll have two or three. Do we get you half price, there? Yeah. Okay. We, we 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 can't afford both of you at full price. They've got a lady. She has an odor that doesn't never die. Which is good. Uh, <laughs> but uh, hockey done now? No. Oh, that ain't that ain't bad. Big group. That's not bad. Yeah, she's good at that. I don't know where she gets that stuff, but she is good at getting donations and things.
Good evening, everyone. I would like to call the Reynoldsburg City Council meeting of February 28, 2022 to order. The time is now 631. I'm Council President Angie Jenkins, and I'd like to welcome everyone to Council Chambers. At this time, we will have the invocation given by Pastor Jeremy Harper. Following the invocation, please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's pray. God would come before you tonight, and I just want to thank you for these servants of the city uh, and their lives that they've dedicated to just trying to make this city a better place. Lord, I pray that you bless the leadership, uh, bless them with wisdom, guidance. Um, God, I pray for unity and that we can work together uh, despite differences to just um, serve the people of Reynoldsburg. Uh, Lord, I want to say a special prayer for Ukraine and Russia's situation. Lord, we pray for peace. We pray that you bring resolution, God, and that innocent lives need not be wasted. So God, be with us tonight. Thank you for these, these people. And uh, it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance. Please be seated. Would the clerk please call the roll? Council Member Lawson Moreau? Here. Council Member Cotner? Here. Council Member Baker? Council Member Bryant? Here. Council Member Strickland? Present. Council Member Salvati? Here. Council Member Peckerow? Here. President Jenkins? Here. Next, we have the approval of the agenda. There is one change to the agenda. Item 1 and Section 11 is being Move to section 13, consent agenda for a second reading. Are there any other changes to the agenda? Saying none, the agenda stands approved as amended. Next, we have approval of minutes. Approval of City Council regular meeting minutes of February 14, 2022. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections to these minutes? Saying none, the minutes stand approved as submitted. Next, we have community comments. The community comments portion of the meeting is an opportunity for citizens to address council. Citizens may bring matters to the attention of city council or discuss items on the agenda. Before addressing city council, members of the public are asked to complete a speaker's form and give it to the clerk. The council president will invite speakers to step to the microphone, give their name and address. All remarks should be addressed to council as a whole and not exceed three minutes. Are there any comments from the community? Yes, Madam President. Um, Caitlin Cordell and Anna Truax from Heartland Bank. Good evening. Good evening, President Jenkins and members of the council. We are here to talk about our Heartland Hometown Program. Um, my name is Caitlin Cordell. I live in 651 Loretto Lane, Blacklick, Ohio, but we are representing the bank tonight, um, and that is at 6887 East Main Street in Reynoldsburg. I'd like to pass it over to Anna so that we can talk about this program. Hello. Okay, I'm Anna Truex. I live at 230 Key Boulevard, Potosco, Ohio, 43062. And I have worked in Reynoldsburg for about six years now at Heartland Bank. We have just started a program that I feel like can help a lot of the citizens here in the community, and it's our Heartland Hometown Program. It's a program really focused on helping people that live in or want to purchase a home in the low to moderate income track, and then also individuals that might have low to moderate income who would like to purchase a home anywhere in the area. Um, we really feel like this could help them. The requirements are simply that they have a minimum credit, credit score of 640. Their income, if they want to purchase a home anywhere in the area, has to be below 67000 um, And then also, if they do make more than that, they can still qualify the, for the program. Um, they will just need to purchase a home in an area that is in the low to moderate income track. 
and they need to take a um, homeowner's class prior to the closing. So we just feel like that can help. Thank you. Thank you. Madam President, Mr. John Hogg. Evening, Council. Uh, just two really quick comments. Uh, first of all, uh, my husband and I, Sean Kress, live at 7671 Broadwin Drive. Um, we try to do the right thing always by recycling as much as we can and disposing of as little as we can. And um, the way that the city charges for disposal, yeah, as I understand it, we're paying by the amount of water that we use. And in the spirit of uh, people wanting to be responsible for their own uh, impact on the system, I'd like this council to consider looking into pay-as-you-throw programs. So that allows um, the disposal people to weigh the amount of stuff that you put in the landfill versus what you uh, are recycling and bill you based on the impact that you're having on the system. Uh, the example that I know of is North Miami and uh, Florida, where I used to live. Uh, but the EPA has a great website uh, on pay-as-you-throw, and I just would encourage the council to look into it. Um, in the spirit of personal responsibility, which we hear a lot of uh, slogans, um, if people want to live up to that, then they can. You know, we, we throw out a small Kroger bag of actual trash and significantly contribute to the recycling program. A couple down the street that uses the same amount of water puts out five or six 50-gallon bags, that, and they pay the same amount as we do. So I just would like you to consider that. And then uh, second to that, uh, the infra bipartisan infrastructure bill has several billion dollars for additional EV uh, stations for zero emissions vehicles. Um, I noticed that uh, Route 16 and 40, they connect to Route 13, which is on one of the corridors that are already approved by uh, the Federal Highway Works Administration. Um, 16 and 40 are not, and our existing two, to two or four, I think it's four EV stations, qualify us to apply for uh, having 16 and 40 approved as, uh, it's, it's called an alternative fuel corridor. And the, uh, I think May is the deadline for submitting uh, applications, and Mortsey, I think, has done some of the earlier uh, applications. So um, I just would encourage us to try to make this a city uh, of the future particularly with Intel being so close uh, by, having some additional EV stations would make us a, a really attractive uh, place to, to bring your family. Thank, Thank you, you. Appreciate it. Uh, can I ask a question? Yes, Council Member oh. Bagarel. So thank you for bringing this up because be as you throw back, I forget your name, but I think this is something very important, at least um, you brought this up, but we need to start something. Awareness in the community. I see a lot of press around. And I think this is something um, I believe we should work. Uh, what we can, I don't know, but I think this is something very important. All of us need to be aware. Thank you. Guys. Thank you for bringing this up. That. And if there's anything I can do to put together a packet to send to Ms. Prasher or anything like that, I'd be happy to do that. Thanks so much. Thank you. Madam President, I have no further in-house comments and no uh, email comments were received. Thank you. Do we have any comments from Council? Councilwoman Strickland? Thank you, Madam President. Um, Mr. John, I just wanted to let you know that I currently sit on the MORPC um, Commission as the board. Um, and so we've been, you know, attending those meetings and they talk about that infrastructure. So we are in the meetings. We are having those conversations. Uh, along with the mayor, so thank you. Do we have any other comments from council? Council Member Packerel? Yes, uh, I could have done it at the end, but let me. This is very uh, difficult time for all of us when you see the news every single day for the last five or six days, remembering the people of Ukraine. And it reminds me back my days in 1990s. I believe it's much worse than that, but PTSD is, tr is triggering uh, like whenever we are talking at home. I, I don't know what we can do, but at least we can pray for them. 
but this is so difficult. I believe what what they are going through, and I want to just remember them and keep all of us should keep them in our prayer. And if there's anything we can do, definitely we should do. Um, but I don't know we have any, any limitation to do anything at all out there. But I think we should keep on praying for them, so thinking for them and their life. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other comments from council? Do we have any comments from Mayor Begany? Of course, Madam President, just a few things. Um, one, to kind of go in line with the charging stations, we're actually identifying a few locations right now. Most likely they'll be located at the uh, Future Alliance facility on the corner of Maine and Bryce. We're also looking at some other ones in the Old Town area. So we're, we're working on some things like that. Uh, which leads me to the Green Tomato Program. Uh, Green Tomato Program is our sustainability program, so we are uh, about done with our internal review of some of the goals and objectives that we're going to get uh, together to present to council probably sometime in March. Uh, but we're also going to be looking to involve community members to be a part of our Green Tomato Initiative uh, for Recycling and Sustainability. Uh, so in case anybody's out there that is listening would like to be a part of that, that would be a great opportunity. Uh, speaking of opportunities, we also have our Tomato Festival programming update uh, tomorrow. Uh, this is our volunteer program for those that want to get interested in either helping or suggesting options because the Tomato Festival will be here before you know it. I mean, tomorrow is March 1st and we're going to blink and it's going to be that first weekend in August. Uh, so you can come here live at City Hall and make your suggestions made. Um, it's going to be an even more robust package from uh, last year. We're going to be adding a couple of cool things, including a pickleball tournament that will be there as well. So that's one of the many things that will be coming up. Uh, and a preview for council probably sometime, I believe, in uh, maybe the second meeting in March, um, possibly the first, is uh, some updates for the 2022 street program. Uh, we have identified a majority of the roads yet. We're now waiting on everything to come back from our engineers for some cost estimates before we put things out to bid, but you should see those in the not too distant future. And a special thank you to everybody who's ever driven on Main Street or Lancaster in the last couple of months and those that will be driving on it again in the next few months after this. Um, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, the AEP is working very hard to get uh, everything ready for those power lines to come down, and then we'll be moving into our next phase, which includes uh, some expanded side or expanded sidewalks, working on some stormwater and drainage and things of that nature. Um, it's going to be a, a unique summer, but hopefully once we get out of that intersection at Maine and Lancaster, things will kind of open up. Uh, we are working to try and sync the lights a little bit better on a regular basis to help for a little bit more easy traffic flow, especially for some of those uh, high, uh, high traffic times. But again, uh, thank you for your patience. Ultimately, this is going to be a, a beautiful project that will go and help kind of add to the ambiance of our Old Town area, especially with some of the other developments that are going on there, uh, restaurants and boutique shops and things like that. It will be worth it at the end. I know it does not seem like that now. Uh, I've sat in the traffic too. So I'd just like to thank all the community members for that one. And with that, Madam President, back to you. Thank you. Next, we have a motion to approve a resolution recognizing Harriet Tubman Day. Council Member Lawson Rowe, would you please read the resolution? Thank you, Madam President. On this last day of Black History celebrations and commemorations, I have the honor of offering a resolution recognizing Harriet Tubman Day. This is tremendously important to me because though a small woman in stature, she was a giant amongst our American society who fought for freedom for all. According to history.com, Harriet Tubman was an escaped enslaved woman who became a conductor of the Underground Railroad, leading enslaved people to freedom before the Civil War, all while carrying a bounty on her head but she was also a nurse, a union spy, and a woman suffrage supporter. Tubman is one of the most recognized icons in American history, and her legacy has inspired counsel, countless people from every race and background. And with that, give me a moment to pull it up. A resolution recognizing Harriet Tubman Day. Whereas Harriet Tubman is revered by many as a freedom seeker and leader of the Underground Railroad. And whereas after escaping from slavery herself in 1849, Harriet Tubman led hundreds of slaves to freedom by making a reported 19 trips through the network of hiding places known as the Underground Railroad, 
for her efforts to help ensure that our nation always honors its promise of liberty and opportunity for all. She became known as the Moses of her people. And whereas, while serving as a nurse, scout, cook, and emissary, during the American Civil War, Harriet Tubman often risked her own freedom and safety to protect that of others. And whereas, after the war, she continued working for justice and for the cause of human dignity until her death on March 10th, 1913. And whereas, today we are deeply thankful for her efforts of this brave, selfless, courageous, and extraordinary woman who has been a source of inspiration to all generations of Americans. And whereas, in recognition of Harriet Tubman's special place in our hearts of all who cherish freedom, Congress passed a joint resolution 257 on March 10th, 1990, in observance of Harriet Tubman Day on her 77th anniversary of her death. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Council of the City of Reynoldsburg that we do hereby proclaim Thursday, March 10th, 2022, Harriet Tubman Day. In observance of the 109th anniversary of her passing, we remember Harriet Tubman's commitment to freedom and rededicate ourselves to the timeless principles she sought to uphold. I would like to invite the following to the podium to offer remarks, respectively. That would be the Reynoldsburg Truro Historical Society, and then next would be school board member Vice President Angela Abram and two representatives from the Reynoldsburg track team, and then we'll hear from Girl Trek Columbus, and lastly, Black Girls Run Columbus. I have to make a correction for you, Meredith. Um, according to Wilbur Henry Siebert, who was the leading authority in the United States, he was a professor of history at Ohio State University, Harriet did not lead hundreds of people. She led thousands of people through the Appalachian Mountains. Sorry. I appreciate that. <laughs> I was a little nervous. After our <laughs> remarks are complete, I'll present you and um, the other organizations with the resolution and an opportunity to take a group picture. Thank you. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Mark Myers, 1375 Creekside Place. And I'm from the Truro, Reynoldsburg Truro Historical Society. I've uh, been a past president and now uh, on the board of directors. And I'll be speaking uh, first uh, this evening, then Mary, our president, will be joining me for a few words. Uh, since this is the last day of African American History Month, as was just mentioned, uh, I'm pleased to talk to you about some local citizens of Reynoldsburg who are active in the Underground Railroad. We just heard about Harriet Tubman, a great lady. So Reynoldsburg played a significant role in the Underground Railroad because our town was settled by seceders. The seceders were the first to build a church in Truro Township in 1817. And they were strong abolitionists. That is, they were strongly opposed to slavery. They came to this continent to avoid death and persecution in Scotland. Uh, by the way, Seceder Cemetery is still in existence behind Bippy Bop on Route 256 in Reynoldsburg. David and Nancy Graham, okay, they hid fugitives in their cellar in town. Their house atop the hill on Epworth is one of the few still standing that we can recognize for the bravery of its past owners. Alexander Livingston hid slaves on his property in many of the outbuildings and barns. Uh, it is now the site of the Livingston House Park. He provided a large wagon to transport fugitives. And this wagon was called, fittingly, 
the ark. He couldn't do it by himself since he was too high profile a businessman in town and would attract attention if he disappeared for long periods of time. Ben Patterson worked for Alexander Livingston. The wagon, and wagon provided by Mr. Livingston was used on Sunday to take the Livingston family of 11 to church. But during the rest of the week, Ben carried fugitives who were lying on the floor in the back of the ark, covered by a tarp. Ben transported runaway slaves as far away as Mount Vernon, 55 miles, in the middle of the night on bumpy and treacherous, unpaved roads. And lastly, William Noe, that's spelled N-O-E, in Truro Township, was one of the first abolitionists in the country to voice his opinions in public about slavery. He helped many fugitives on their way to Lake Erie. And he lived near what is now Noe Bixby Road. And now I'd like to present Mary Stutes, the Historical Society President, to tell you more about the Underground Railroad and also about a new book on Reynoldsburg history, which we just published. Mary? Hello. I'm too short. Um, I'm Mary Stutes. I live at 1070 Wagoner Road. And um, I recently worked with a middle school teacher and a team of teachers from the elementary schools. And I put together a PowerPoint presentation about the Underground Railroad. And uh, teachers are using those in their classrooms. So the, the uh, presentations talk about all the folks that Mark mentioned. And it also talks about the seceders and how they came to this country and why they were such strong abolitionists. I myself am a seceder. My great-grandfather, my great-great-grandfather is buried in that cemetery behind the BB ball. So uh, that information is also available in the book. Hold your book up. There he is. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I have some with me. They're autographed. And the author of the book is uh, myself. And I had some help from Cornelia Parkinson, who wrote the history of Reynoldsburg and Turo Township in 1981. She told me the next book she's out. <laughs> she's done. Okay. I have some books with me. I'll be in the lobby if anybody would like to get one. They were going to show a slide. Um, the books are $26. That includes the tax. If you'd like one shipped to you, we can do that too. Thank you. Thank you. Vice President Abram. Good evening. Okay. <laughs> Gives me great pleasure to be here this evening with these uh, two outstanding ladies. Uh, last March, Councilwoman uh, Angie Jenkins and Shadnat Strickland and Meredith Lawson Rowe and I, we went out to OSU Newark campus to take pictures with the sculpture of Harriet Tubman. The sculpture is a woman seated. Uh, she's looking toward the sky with a content smile, a walking stick, a head wrap, a shawl, a lantern, and a pistol. Uh, this year, on March 10th, Councilwoman Lawson Rowe and I will walk 2.2 miles to celebrate the 200th anniversary of Harriet Tubman in the year two, uh, 2022. This is to support Girls Trek uh, moving tribute to walk for freedom and healing of women, black women, worldwide. Globally, the average life expectancy of black women is 65 years old. Black women are dying at higher rates than any other group of women on the planet. There are many causes, uh, including exhaustion, chronic stress, exploitative labor, uh, loneliness, generational trauma, systemic injustice and inequities in health, incarceration, equity, and pay. Uh, Girl Trek says, no more. Uh, we will never ask for permission to save our own lives. 
The goal is to increase the global life expectancy by 10 years in 10 years. I ask you to join us by participating in your own walks to reflect the journey of Harriet Tubman and to reflect on your personal health. You can walk alone, you can walk with others, you can walk with us. Uh, we will be walking at the Y at 6.30 a.m. on March 10th and taking photos using the hashtag WeAreHarriet. This is the uh, official girl trek uh, We Are Harriet shirt that I'm wearing tonight, and some in the audience are also wearing. Uh, girl trek encourages everyone to wear superhero blue because we are the Harriet hero heroes of our households. And what a fitting way to close out Black History Month and to open up Women's History Month. Two wonderful athletes that embody the movement for Harriet include uh, Naya Collier, raise your hand, there you go, and Holland Tillman. Uh, these student athletes have qualified for the state indoor track meet uh, this Friday. Uh, it'll be held in Geneva. <laughs> uh, earlier this month, uh, Naya ran a personal best 60-meter uh, uh, dash in 8.89 seconds. And Holland ran a personal best of 8.15 seconds for the 60-meter dash. Naya is on the uh, 200. Uh, oh, Naya ran the 200 meters in 26.88, and Holland ran it in 26.88. Uh, these women were suggested by their coach, Rich, to represent Reynoldsburg for this resolution this evening. Um, I would like to recognize them for their leadership their work ethic, and their example as they empower others to move and in inspire other, others through their athleticism. Uh, would either of you like to say anything this evening to support your teammates? <laughs> yes? Oh, okay. All right. Well, um, there will be some relays, and in addition to uh, representing um, the state in their individual races. So I want to um, say go Lady Raiders and uh, rock it out the park. Um, thank you, Council, for the opportunity to showcase these Reynoldsburg City School track and field team athletes for this worthy cause. Each one reach one. We are one forward together. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> We're very proud of them. I have a meeting to attend, so I hope someone will get pictures for us. Okay, thank you. Girls Track, please come forward. Excuse me, Girl Track. I kept, I've been mispronouncing it. Good evening. Excuse me. My name is Renee Smith. I reside at 49 Jessica Way in Gahanna. I'm the communications ambassador for Girl Trek Columbus. With me today is our engagement ambassador, Isetta Murray, along with some of our most devoted community organizers, Julia Brazier. Frida Calloway, Darlene Price, Bertie Fields, Bertie Adams Fields, I'm sorry, and Ariana Brazier. To the Honorable Mayor Joe Begany, Council President Angela Jenkins, each of the distinguished members of the Reynoldsburg City Council, I bring you greetings from Girl Trek. We also extend a warm welcome to our cohorts, the Black Girls Run Columbus. Thank you, Councilwoman Lawson Rowe, for offering this resolution today and for the invitation to remark on why we, too, revere Harriet Tubman, whose underground railroad network, as history would have it, was once operative in Reynoldsburg. I am the daughter of Ruby May, the granddaughter of Lillian, Louisa, Hetty, and Harriet, my own Harriet Potter, myself and those with me today, collectively, we are the daughters of Harriet Tubman, 
the baddest freedom fighter of all time. Her legacy endures and continues to inspire all of us. After Harriet achieved her own freedom, she came back to free others, giving us the blueprint for the work that Girl Trek does today. This is the essence of the Girl Trek movement. We walk, as Harriet did, for freedom, self-care, for healing for black women and girls worldwide. Founded 10 years ago by two friends, Vanessa Garrison and Morgan Dixon, Girl Trek is the largest movement and nonprofit for black women and girls in the nation. We are a movement of over one million and counting. Girl Trek has pioneered a health movement which is grounded in civil rights history and principles. Through walking campaigns, community leadership, and health advocacy, we mobilize black women to be change makers in our lives and in our communities by walking. Black women are dying younger and at higher rates than any other group of women from preventable diseases. That is why we unapologetically walk to save our lives. We believe in the power of walking to restore our health and humanity. In essence, we are the Harriets of today. We are so pleased that the city of Reynoldsburg is designating March 10th as Harriet Tubman Day. We applaud you. As a tradition, Girl Trek celebrates Harriet Tubman's birthday each year. In 2008, in honor of her, our staff of 10 women completed an epic and challenging 100-mile trek through sun, wind, and snow from the eastern shore of Maryland, crossing the Mason-Dixon line into Delaware, actually retracing Harriet's steps on the Underground Railroad. It was called Harriet's Great Escape. We are excited that the city of Reynoldsburg Thank you. <laughs> will be celebrating Mama Harriet this year. On March 10th, in celebration of Harriet's 200th birthday, Girl Trek will take part in a global walking tribute, celebrated nationally and internationally. We invite everyone, especially our colleagues of Black Girls Run Columbus, to trek from wherever you are for the healing and, liber and liberation of black women and girls. As part of this celebration, we continue the, the tradition of the podcast known as Black History Boot Camp. With Vanessa going live from Harriet's hometown in Auburn, New York, and Morgan going live from Africa in the Ashanti Kingdom of Kusami, the ancestral home of Harriet. These podcasts are available to enjoy on Apple, Google, Audible, and Spotify platforms, as well as available on our national website, girltrek.org, where we encourage black women and girls and our allies to take the pledge of self-care and sisterhood to save our lives. Izetta Murray will now um, have something for Councilwoman Lawson Rowe as I close in sharing the Girl Trek doctrine of Harriet Tubman. It Harriet's doctrine, I'm sorry, it contains four tenets. Number one, save your own life first. Number two, when you learn the way, come back for a sister. Number three, rally your allies. And then number four, and finally, find joy. We thank you. Good evening, Mayor Begney, President Jenkins, and all the council members. Thank you this evening. We are so pleased to be here. 
I am Carolyn Thomas. I live at 1079 Arcarol Drive in Gahanna, Ohio, and I am one of the ambassadors of Black Girls Run Columbus, one of the many chapters that, um, that goes across the United States. With me is the other ambassador, Shatricia Davis and Cherry Calhoun, and behind us is our run leads, Doretha Curl, Marsha Mad Madison, and Yolanda Scott. Yes. Okay, I had to double check that. So, like um, Meredith said, I'm just a little nervous, so we'll, we'll roll with this. Anyways, just to give you a little bit of information, Black Girls Run is a national organization, um, nonprofit organization that has about 70 plus chapters throughout the U.S. and cities and communities throughout the U.S. And our main reason for Black Girls Run is also the health disparity of black women in the United States. That is the main concern. And what we try to do is encourage and motivate ladies to get up off the couch and move. We bring them in, we help them to develop or continue with their healthy lifestyles and making sure that that is a priority for them because that's the only way that we can beat this um, epidemic of obesity and chronic disease in our nation. So, um, our, and our mission, I just said it, is to encourage ladies to get off, off of the couch. And they don't have to run. They don't have to, um, they can walk. So even though it says black girls run, we do walk. We do participate in other activities such as swimming and biking and sort just to move. Get the heart pumping. Get moving. Um, anything else? Anybody else have to offer anything else? This is a collaborative situation here. <laughs> Um, yeah, and that's to encourage. So with the more people involved, then hopefully the numbers will go down with the diseases and the obesity and just get them moving, be positive. You know, we all need each other. And without us coming together as a group of sisterhood and encouraging and supporting one another as we journey on our health, um, that's what we need to do. Each and every day. Thank you. I would like to say on behalf of Black on behalf of Black Girls Run, we really appreciate having this opportunity oh on on uh, March the tenth to unite with our uh, girls, our local uh, chapter here, and walk for Harriet Tubman. So we. You will see us out. We will be walking. Hopefully, we we'll have some folks at some different events that are happening. But we're excited to be a part of this yes. collaboration yes. in yes. honor of yes. Harriet Tubman. Yes. So thank you for the opportunity, and we're just excited to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much.
Got it. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> Represent. Are there any questions or comments from council? May I have a motion to approve this resolution? So move. Council Member Strickland, may I have a second? Council Member Bryant, is there any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Oppose? All opposed? The motion carries. Next, we have a motion to hereby confirm the mayoral appointment of Teresa Albee to serve on the Planning Commission to fill an unexpired term beginning March 1st, 2022 through December 31st, 2022. With Stephen Hicks' resignation from the Planning Commission, Mayor Begany has selected Ms. Albee to fulfill Mr. Hicks' term. Are there any questions or comments from Council? May I have a motion? to affirm the mayor's appointment to the Planning Commission. So moved. Council Member Savati, is there a second? Second. Council Member Pecorell, is there any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion carries. A motion to amend the rules of council. Are there any questions or comments from council or changes to council's rules? May I have a motion to amend the rules of council? So moved. Council Member Baker, is there a second? Second. Council Member Savati, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries. Next we have reports. Auditor's report, Clerk Prasher. The Auditor's Office submitted the budget by department and classification for the month of January 2022. Next, we have liquor permits, and that will be with Deputy Chief Grizel. Thank you. Good evening, Madam President, members of council. This application is for a transfer of a liquor permit from Main Street Marathon to Maloney LLC, located at 6748 East Main Street, east of Rose Hill Road. The statutory agent will be Cool Thapa. I hope I pronounced that correctly. The permit is for a class C1, C2, or D6, which is for carry out a beer, wine, and mixed beverages to include Sunday sales. The business location is not situated in an area that would have adverse effect on the operation of hospitals, schools, or playgrounds. I do want to tell you that on February 15th, 
of this year, RPD detectives used an informant for an underage purchase of alcohol. This charge is still pending in mayor's court. However, after discussion with uh, city attorney Shook, uh, there's not enough to deny the transfer or request or to request a hearing at this time. Where'd you say the location is? It's the marathon east of uh, Rose Hill on Main, on the north side of the street. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions from anyone else? I have a question. Mm -hmm. So, Attorney Shook, then, if there's if there was an illegal activity of sale to an underage minor, and there's something pending, can we delay this? Can we postpone until there's more information? Uh, no, we can't. The the charge actually goes against the uh, clerk who made the sale. So it's actually an individual, not the entity who's charged in the court. Um, we did have a number of similar operations. We had a CI out in the field, uh, conducted a bit of a sting operation in the city. Um, most of these individuals are coming into mayor's court, pleading guilty and paying a substantial fine. And those are the individual salesperson that you're correct, saying? Correct. So the, the part-time clerk that gets paid barely above minimum wage that is just trying to get through, has to eat these court costs, and the ownership gets to go on their way. It, it, unless it's any more, at least from an evidentiary standpoint, an isolated incident involving one clerk, uh, we can't draw further conclusions than that. Um, the clerks are generally trained uh, to ask for ID, and sometimes they do not. And in some of these cases, it's they're made to feel you know guilty for asking for ID. So I, I, I get it. But yeah, and that seems to be strange that there's no stronger force, forces we can take on ownership of those situations. But again, if it's an isolated incident, then it's not as concerning, but still it, it's a problem, obviously. Yeah, if we, if we had evidence that it was systemic at a particular location, that would certainly be reason to uh, request a hearing and potentially deny a transfer. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I have a question, Madam President. I have a question. Um, yes. So, DC, you said that they were looking to have a license to offer uh, beer and wine on Sundays? So this is just a transfer? So someone purchased the liquor permit that's going to take the business over? So they're just transferring what they already were capable of doing under the permit. Oh, okay. So currently they can sell alcohol on Sunday in that location? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So is that different than at um, like UDF and the and CVS on Sundays? I didn't think they sold on Sundays. They might have a different permit. Okay. Uh, I, Mr. Shook would have to speak to the legal intricacies of that, but I believe you can buy different variations or purchase different variations from the state. Depends upon their availability in the uh, area. But yes, there are variations. Typically with carryout, you're going to be looking at uh, beer, wine, spiritus liquor, um, alcohol content up to 42%. Thank you. Proof up to 42%. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have the West Licking Fire District. Council Member Baker. Thank you, Madam President. If you look in your packets, there's the statistical data for the month of December and January. Um, there's nothing really to report that services is still being um, rendered in a timely fashion. Even though there's a lot of growth that's going on in West Licking, we are still able to provide uh, fast services to those who need it, so that's a good thing. Um, that's all I have right now. We're, we're still working on the new firehouse to design and stuff. But hopefully I can have something to show the public here soon, but these things take time. Thank you. Next, we have Development, Parks, and Recreation Committee. Council Member Baker. Thank you, Madam President. This is the Development, Park, and Recreation Committee meeting for February 28, 2022. Members in attendance are Council Member Cotner, Council Member Lawson Rowe, Council Member Packrow, myself, and you, Madam President. Um, there's only one item on the agenda. It's an ordinance to approve the final plat plan for Spring Hill Farms Development, Section 3, Part A and B. Um, Mr. Mayor, would you like to speak on this? Yes, uh, thank you, Chair Baker and members of Council, Madam President. 
Uh, this is the continuing uh, move uh, for the MI development off Wagner Road. Um, just to kind of give you a quick version of everything, they have sold well over 30 homes. They're actually moving into their second phase as far as selling the actual homes themselves. This is the final plat so they can go ahead and start the infrastructure improvements in the area. Uh, this was originally supposed to be sometime in June or July, but because of the incredibly strong home sales in the region, they have been able to accelerate that process and move it up to this point. Uh, so I uh, requested this uh, be submitted this evening. Okay. Any questions from the committee to the mayor? Any from council? I just want to add, I'm glad people want to move here to Reynoldsburg, and it shows right there because if sales are going that fast, that lets you know that Reynoldsburg is a very desirable city and community to move and live. So I take that as pride. The only thing that's uh, making it even less <laughs> expedient is uh, trying to make sure that they have all the materials for the houses that they want to build. Otherwise, they probably would be even further along. I agree with you. So seeing how there's no more comments or anything, I'll go ahead and make a motion that we forward this ordinance on the council for its first reading. Is there a second? Second. Uh, seconded by um, Councilwoman Lawson Rowe. Any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Ayes have it. This ordinance will be forwarded to council for its first reading. As there's no further business in front of the Development, Park, and Recreation Committee, Madam President, back to you. Thank you. Next, we have Public Safety Law and Courts Committee, Council Member Bryant. This is the Public Safety Law and Courts Committee meeting for February 28th, 2022. Members in attendance are Co Council Member Cotner, Council Member Pecorell, Council Member Lawson Rowe, myself, and President Jenkins. Uh, item one is an ordinance establishing section 701.07 of the codified ordinances of the city of Reynoldsburg, commonly referred to as the pay to stay ordinance. Attorney Shook. Uh, yes, thank you, Council Member Bryant. This is uh, an ordinance that had previously been on for a work session. I provided uh, the members of council with the latest, um, hopefully final, version of this ordinance. There was a couple of typos. I wanted to make sure we got those changed and uh, got you the physical copy. Uh, here is where we're at with this ordinance. The pay to stay affirmative defense, which as we know is an affirmative defense that would be available to a tenant in an eviction proceeding, allows a tenant uh, to pay uh, their late rent and late fees and avoid the filing of an eviction or after the filing of an eviction allows them to pay their late rent, their late fees, and the attorney fees of the landlord up to $250 and present an affirmative defense to an eviction. The affirmative defense would not be available after eviction is granted. Uh, so previous version had the availability before set out, uh, we took that section out. So once the eviction is actually granted by the court, then that offense would no longer be available. And the reason we did that is it just becomes more complicated once you get into the writ of restitution and set aside procedures in the court. Um, the defense would only be available once, and then you would not be able to use it again for a period of 12 months. Um, and the reason we did that was we do not want someone who is chronically late on their rent to be able to use this defense over and over and over again. It's meant to be a one-time thing when someone finds themselves in a difficult situation. Uh, in addition, uh, we do have a provision in there that caps out the late fee that can be charged for um, late rent at 5% of the monthly contract rent or $25. Uh, typically, it's gonna be 5% of the monthly contract rent. Um, and that is, a cap on the late fee that can be imposed against someone who's going to be utilizing this defense in court, paying their late rent, their late fees, and after filing the attorney fees. Any questions? None from me. Um, any questions from the committee? Any questions from council? All right, I move that we forward this ordinance to council for a first reading. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Council Member Lawson Rowe. Do we have any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 
Opposed? Motion carries. This ordinance will be forwarded to council to, uh, for a first reading. Um, with there's no further business in front of the Public Safety Law and Courts Committee meeting, I return it to you, President Jenkins. Thank you. Next, we have Public Service and Transportation Committee, Council Member Strickland. Thank you, um, Madam President. This is the Public Service and Transportation Committee meeting for February 28, 2022. Members in attendance are Council Member Cotner, Council Member Lawson Rowe, Council Member Packerell, myself, and President Jenkins. Item number one, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with MHT for the engineering and management of the 2022 sewer line CCTV manhole inspection and cleaning project. Director Dorman. Yes, this is an annual program we do. Uh, we will basically look at a sewer system in a certain area. Uh, we typically have a program that we look at every year. Uh, we work on uh, about a five-year plan on areas we're going to work in. Uh, given the issues we've had over the past uh, few years, though, we moved a lot of uh, this work to the Briarcliff area, evaluating the condition of the sewers. Um, what we do is we basically put a camera down there. We televise the entire network. Uh, we look for gaps. We look for collapsed pipes, uh, uh, pipes that are uh, disformed or that's the term, uh, uh, we're basically, as opposed to a, a, a circular, they're uh, more of like an oval shape. We're making sure that we have the full capacity in those lines. Um, and basically, when we're done with that program, we'll use that data then to go out uh, the following year to bid uh, would be the rehabilitation project, which would be lining the, pro the whole entire system. When we line the sewer projects, or the sewer lines, you, as you know, most of the sewer lines in these areas are anywhere from 50 uh, years or older. Uh, when we line the sewers, it basically is like creating a brand new uh, pipe without having to go and dig the areas up. There are some areas where we do have to dig if the pipe is completely collapsed or what we call point repair. We'll have to go down and actually fix that piece. Um, but for the most part, it's just lining, which is considerably cheaper than uh, any other rehabilitation effort. Thank you, Director Dorman. Are there any questions or comments from the committee on, the, on this legislation? From council? I move we forward this ordinance to council for our first reading. Is there a second? Second. Second by council member Pecreal. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. This ordinance will be forwarded to council for our first reading. Item number two, an ordinance to amend chapter 1305, permits and fees, section 1305.01, Fee schedule of the codified ordinance for the city of Reynoldsburg. Director Dorman. Yes, so uh, late last year we actually brought this uh, to city council. Uh, we wanted to come up with a more of a comprehensive fee schedule to hand applicants and developers so when they came in they knew exactly their fees from beginning to end if they were going to start and finish a project in the city. Um, since we have had some additional staff, some great additions to the city, we have uh, a new CBO on in-house now, which we have not had for many years. Um, our new planning and zoning administrator upstairs as well, and uh, our economic development director. They did not get a chance to look at the old one um, since they've come on board. Uh, they looked at a few of the items on there, and I tried to make it as simple as I could for you. I think most of the edits are redlined in there, so you can see where we made revisions. Um, the, probably the most significant change is we are actually reviewing things in-house. So we're not sending all that out to consultants. So there are fees um, for basically doing that work in-house. Um, and then there's also a reference if it has to be sent out to a developer to make sure we're getting the best review we can. Um, traffic studies, um, uh, any kind of other plans. Our CBO in particular is holding office hours and trying to work as best he can with people in the office to go through plans to make sure it's um, as, as quick as it can. Uh, we're, we, we, we want to be thorough, but we also want to make sure that we're catching everything that we can and working with the developers uh, to get a good project in the end. Thank you, Director Dorman. Are there any questions or comments from the committee? From council? I move we forward this ordinance to council for a first reading. Is there a second? Second. Second by Council Member Lawson Rowe. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. This ordinance will be forwarded to council for a first reading. Item number three. An ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into an annual agreement with EMHT for a geographical information system, GIS, maintenance, and support in 2022. Director Dorman. 
yes, so this is basically the mapping system that the city uses. Um, I do have some good news. Pretty soon this will be a public facing uh, document, or I should say uh, application that everyone can see. Uh, we met with the MHT last week about doing that on the uh, development page. We're actually going to have this available. Um, so if you want to look at where your utilities are, um, you'll be able to see where the water and sewer lines run through the city. Um, and you'll also be able to see things such as street lights, uh, signs, uh, roadway system, basically anything you see at the county auditor site. If you are Google Maps, that's probably another better example. However, imagine Google Maps where you can see actually all the utilities that are underground. That's what this essentially is for. Um, they update this every year for us. So as a new development comes in, such as Spring Hill, they add and digitize those maps and put them in the GIS system. Um, it quickly allows us to give information. We can go on there and click on a line and tell you the exact size of that line, the length of the line. Um, and then we also share that with other utility companies when they're designing uh, their infrastructure as well. Thank you, Director Dorman. Are there any questions or comments from the committee? From council? I move we forward this ordinance to council for a first reading. Is there a second? Second. Second by council member Pecquerel. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. This ordinance will be forwarded to council for a first reading. Item number four, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into an annual agreement with EMHT for web GIS upgrade enhancement for 2022. Director Dorman. Yes, this is kind of a continuation of what I just spoke of. This is basically bringing it to our website. It's also the addition of some layers. Um, for instance, right now we do not have our uh, street lights or our street signs in there. That's something we want to put in there. Eventually, we want to tie that to our work order system so that residents can quickly look at that, too. And if they have a street sign that needs replaced or something that needs fixed, they can click, just click on that, that essentially that attribute or that dot or line, um, which will then send it to the appropriate department. Another thing, too, is uh, the system has changed. We're on, we run a cloud-based system on our GIS, um, and we're moving up to a newer version, which also require, requires some additional time on their part, which they've included in this proposal as well. Thank you, Director Dorman. So if a resident um, clicks on this map um, and they need the stop sign replaced, do they have to fill out like any documentation or anything like that to um, submit that ticket? So once this gets established, we're going to have this if we're going to start out internally, it's a work order system that will track all this stuff on, on the computer. So basically, if we wanted to look at how many stop signs we, you know, or signs period that have been uh, damaged throughout the city. You'll basically kind of just geographically display these on a map. Um, once we kind of get all the tweaks worked out internally, then we're going to hopefully transfer it over to the public side. Um, I've done some programs like that in the city. It's great. So when you're out walking your dog or if Mer Meredith's walking, as she usually does, and she sees something, she can quickly bring up the app on her phone, um, just click it on, click on that particular thing, and it'll basically send it right to the right department. So you don't have to call anyone. Uh, it doesn't have to filter through a secretary. It goes directly to that supervisor who then can dispatch that work order out. Thank you, Director Dorman. Are there any questions or comments from the committee on this legislation? Quick comment. So, Director Dorman, that means you don't want to get another email from me? No, I don't mind. I like your emails. I don't mind your emails. <laughs> I get a lot of emails, but it's, it's fine. All right. Any questions from the council? I move we forward this Ordinance to Council for a first reading. Is there a second? Second. Second by Council Member Lawson Rowe. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. This ordinance will be forwarded to Council for a first reading. As there is no further business for the Public and Transportation Committee, I return this meeting back to you, President Jenkins. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Finance and Administration Committee, Council Member Savati. Thank you, President Jenkins. <clears throat> this is the Finance and Administration Committee meeting for February 28th, <clears throat> 2022. Members in attendance are Councilmember Baker, Councilmember Bryant, Councilmember Strickland, myself, and President Jenkins. Uh, there's one item on the agenda tonight, and it's uh, an ordinance to establish Section 160.13 Paid Family Leave of the Codified Ordinances of the City of Reynoldsburg. Um, I don't know if the attorney or the mayor is going to comment on this at all. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and comment. Uh, thank you, Chair Salvati. 
Uh, this is, I believe, the uh, final draft of Section 160.13, uh, paid family leave under the Reynoldsburg codified ordinances. This would be uh, leave that is available to new parents, whether they be biological, adoptive, step, or foster parents um, of a new child. Uh, it would be 10 weeks of 100% paid leave. Uh, it would not reduce uh, other leave that is available to those employees, which includes short-term disability leave for childbirth. Um, this is not leave that would be available to anyone who is currently under a collective bargaining agreement. So you're going to vote on the uh, police union contract later this evening. Uh, there, uh, they would not be affected by this change in code. It would only be non-union employees. Um, in addition, I would note that there's also a section on here for paid family leave for parents of stillborn and uh, children lost during the third trimester uh, and any children who may pass away during uh, the time of paid family leave. Um, and that is four weeks of paid leave as well. Um, so those are the, the highlights of the legislation. And I'm here if you have any questions. All right, fantastic. Are there any questions or comments from the committee for the attorney? Uh, Council Member Strickland. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm so glad that this particular um, legislation is coming forth in Reynoldsburg. Um, I have witnessed many um, parents go through losing a child unexpectedly. Um, so thank you for bringing this forth. Uh, I truly appreciate it. I have a question, right, Chair. Thank you. Um, Attorney Shook, are there any other municipalities um, in Central Ohio that have um, similar um, paid family leave such as this? Yeah, um, Upper Arlington does. I believe they have up to uh, six weeks of paid family leave. Uh, also looked closely at the city of Lakewood, which is up near Cleveland. Um, they had a very detailed ordinance that had um, up to 12 weeks of paid family leave, but just for um, the mother, and they didn't include that much time or nearly that much time for the father. Uh, this uh, gives the father uh, 10 weeks of paid leave as well. Thank you. All right, any other comments from the rest of council? Just Councilman one Gardner. quick question. This starts then right when employment begins? Or when, do, when are they eligible for this uh, 10 weeks? So they have to be a three-quarter time or full-time employee of the city for at least 12 months uh, before they would be eligible. Okay. If they're three-quarter time, then they're paid, they're paid their normal three-quarter wages during Correct. that time. Correct. All benefits continue to be paid, and they keep benefits, too. I know that was spelled out in there, so nothing. Basically, they just keep, clock just keeps moving. Everything's good for them, then. Correct. For, for full time and three quarters. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Any more comments from anyone? All right. Seeing none, um, I'll move to forward this ordinance to council for its first read. Uh, is there a second? Second. Second for council uh, member uh, Strickland. Any final discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Okay, that motion carries, and that ordinance will be forwarded to council for its first read. Uh, that concludes the business for the Finance Administration Committee, and I return the meeting to President Jenkins. Thank you. Next, we have consent agenda for emergency adoption. Items 11, 2 through 4 are part of a consent agenda. These ordinances stand for a first reading, unless someone wants to remove an item for further discussion. Council will move forward with a first reading. Would the clerk please read items 11, 2 through 4. 2. An ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract between the City of Reynoldsburg and the Fraternal Order of Police Ohio Labor Council Inc. Dis dispatchers from January 1, 2022 through December 31, 2024 in declaring an emergency. 
Three, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract between the city of Reynoldsburg and the Fraternal Order of Police, Capital City Lodge Number 9, for a period from January 1st, 2022 through December 20. 31st, 2024, and declare an emergency. Three, four, I'm sorry, an ordinance authorizing the appropriation of additional salary funding for overtime for the streets department and declaring an emergency. May I have a motion to approve these ordinances? Councilmember Bryant, may I have a second? Second. Councilmember Baker, would the clerk please call the roll? Councilmember Lawson Rowe? Aye. Councilmember Cotner? Aye. Councilmember Baker? Aye. Councilmember Bryant? Aye. Councilmember Strickland? Aye. Councilmember Savati? Aye. Councilmember Pecorell? Aye. Madam President, that was 7 0. These ordinances are approved with seven affirmative votes and no negative votes. Next, we have a consent agenda for a first reading. Items 12, 1 through 7 are part of a consent agenda. These ordinances stand for a first reading unless someone wants to remove an item for further discussion. Council will move forward with a first reading. Would the clerk please read items 12, 1 through 7. 1. An ordinance to approve the final plat plan for the Spring Hill Farm Development, Section 3, Parts A and B, and declaring an emergency. 2. An ordinance establishing Section 701.07 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of Reynoldsburg, commonly referred to as the Pay to Stay Ordinance. 3. An ordinance authorizing the Mayor to enter into an agreement with emh &T for the engineering and management of the 2022 Sewer Line C CTV Manhole Inspection and Clean Cleaning Project. Four, an ordinance to amend Chapter 1305, Permits and Fees, Section 1305.01, Fee Schedule of the Codified Ordinances for the City of Reynoldsburg. Five, an ordinance authorizing the Mayor to enter into an annual agreement with the MH&T for Geographical Information Systems, GIS, Maintenance, and Support for 2022. Six, an ordinance authorizing the Mayor to enter into an annual agreement with the MH&T for Web GIS Upgrade Enhancements, 2022. 7. An ordinance to establish Section 160.13 Paid Family Leave of the Codified Ordinances of the City of Reynoldsburg. These ordinances stand for a first reading. Next, we have a consent agenda for a second reading. Items 13, 1 through 7 are part of a consent agenda. These ordinances stand for a second reading. Unless someone wants to remove an item for further discussion, Council will move forward with a second reading. Would the clerk please read items 13, 1 through 7. 1. An ordinance authorizing the mayor to accept public infrastructure associated with Spring Hill Farms, Section 1. 2. An ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with the mh &T for program verification and schematic design for the Bryce Park development and appropriating funds, therefore, and declaring an emergency. 3. An ordinance appropriating unencumbered balances as of December 31st, 2021, in various police special revenue funds, providing that revenue for funds received during 2022 be accepted and declaring an emergency. 4. An ordinance appropriating unencumbered balances as of December 31st, 2021 for recovery court funds providing that revenues for funds received during 2022 be accepted and declaring an emergency. Five, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with Martin Painting and Coating Company to paint city street light poles and waive competitive bidding. Six, an ordinance authorizing the annual participation in the ODOT, ODOT Road Salt purchasing contract. Seven, an ordinance authorizing the increase of appropriations for various city jet agreements. These ordinances stand for a second reading. Next, we have a consent agenda for a third reading. Items 14, 1 through 4 are part of a consent agenda. These ordinances stand for a third reading and approval. Unless someone wants to remove an item for further discussion, Council will move forward with a vote on these ordinances. Would the clerk please read items 14, 1 through 4. 1. An ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with OHM for planning services design planning services design for an East Main Street corridor study. 2. An ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with emh &T to conduct surveying, design engineering, and bidding services for the city's 2022 water main replacement project and appropriating funds therefore. 
three, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with EMH&T for the 2022 sewer project for engineering services, construction plans, specifications, bid documents, and appropriating funds, therefore. Four, an ordinance to authorize the purchase of 2,000 MXU readers from census for the upgrade program and waive competitive bidding. May I have a motion to approve these ordinances? So moved. Council Member Pacquerel, may I have a second? Second. Council Member Strickland, would the clerk please call the roll? Council Member Lawson Rowe? Aye. Council Member Cotner? Aye. Council Member Baker? Aye. Council Member Bryant? Aye. Council Member Strickland? Aye. Council Member Savati? Aye. Council Member Pecquerel? Aye. Madam President, that was 7 0. These ordinances are approved with seven affirmative votes and no negative votes. Next, we have other council matters. Does anyone on council have any further items that you would like to discuss this evening? Yes, Councilwoman Meredith Lawson Rowe. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I'd like to share on Saturday, March 12th at 2.30, I will be doing something different um, other than the Ward 4 walkabout that I normally do. I'm actually inviting um, the community to meet me at Baldwin Road Junior High at 2.30 p.m. to walk the track and talk about all things city and Mayor Begney and school, school board member Neil Whitman will be joining me. The rain date, or if the temperatures are extreme, will move to the library. But 2.30 Baldwin Road track. I look forward to seeing you all there. Thank you. Does anyone else on council have any further items that you would like to discuss? Council Member Baker? Um. I do want to put out there congratulations to the men and women's Reynoldsburg basketball team on their win. Um, the Lady uh, Raiders are in the, was it the regional finals, and the men made it to the second round. So kudos to them. And if you get a chance, please go out and support them, especially the women. They're, they're a darn good team. So, and looking at the bracket, not getting ahead of myself, they have a really good chance to win the state, but also – is bad. Is um, <laughs> and also uh, make sure you support the men's basketball team uh, as well. Um, also, I still want to thank um, our men and women, especially our men and women in the service. Seeing how what's going on in the world today, really got to send out prayers to them because who knows what's going to happen with what's been going on over um, in Ukraine. So. Really special shout out to them, to our police force, um, to our nurses, our teachers, um, who've been help, um, helping the community through this pandemic. And obviously those who work in the grocery stores and logistic companies and retail, because they're the ones that help keep this company moving. Our company, I'm sorry, country moving. And so um, that's all I have. Thank you. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to discuss? Our upcoming meetings are BZBA and Planning Commission meetings. The next council meeting is scheduled for Monday, March 14th, beginning at 6.30. And at this time, council is going into executive session and will not conduct in any business following the end of executive session. May I have a motion to go into executive session pursuant to ORC section 121 Point twenty two G three to conference with an attorney for the public body concerning disputes involving the public body that are the subject of pending or imminent court action. So moved. Council Member Savati, may I have a second? Council Member Bryant, would the clerk please call the roll? Council Member Lawson Rowe? Aye. Council Member Cotner? Aye. Council Member Baker? Aye. Council Member Bryant? Aye. Council Member Strickland? Aye. Council Member Silvati? Aye. Council Member Pecoro? Aye. Thank you. Council invites Mayor Begany, Attorney Shook, Assistant Attorney Least, Clerk Pressure to remain in session, and also Deputy Chief Grizzle, please remain. <laughs> 